Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me on the launch pad with the Star Bound Mark 1. It is named thusly because it is bound for the stars, and not our stars, stars beyond our solar system, because this is the mini-series in which I go interstellar. Yes, um, I am using the uh, working multiple solar systems mod to do a series where I go interstellar. It's been it's something I've actually been wanting to do for a while, and I was going to do as a, like a big series, but because the mod's kind of unstable, I think it works better as a mini-series. I've got a lot of plans for it, and I think it'll be awesome, and hopefully will work fine. But the first thing we're doing with this awesome-looking rocket, which has now been sped into four times time accelerate so that you... Uh, don't have to watch this whole boring launch is um yeah this is this is going interstellar right now that's that's our first mission i thought i'd kick off by going to another star because if it was like yeah these first 10 episodes we're going to test technology you'd be like great but we're not going to do that we're going to go interstellar right now this is our first probe to go to another star basically the point of this is to figure out what I need to do to get to the star, how much delta V it will cost, the kind of amount of bur the length of burn sort of thing, how much delta V I'll need at the other end when I slow down around the star, maneuvering to planets, that sort of thing. Um, it probably won't be the most efficient maneuvering because I'm not, you know, I haven't done a lot of this yet, I haven't really thought a lot of the things through, but it will be awesome and it will hopefully get to Dolas. The star I have selected to go to Dolas is um, an inner star. Basically, there um, this mod, if you don't know, adds two stars, um, Dolas and Corbo. Dolas is the inner one which I'm trying to go to now, which is a blue star, which is rather pretty, and it has some planets and things around it. So we'll hopefully be visiting them, um, you know, in the future. I'm planning to go to the, go to Dolas most because since it's the inner star, um, as I'm dropping down my orbit, I'll be accelerating towards it, which means transfer times will be lower. So it's all just about efficiency. Oh, well, not efficiency, just time efficiency, which is a kind of efficiency. But anyway, you can see, well, talking of efficiency, you can see I'm spending a lot of time tweaking my node, to, uh, tweaking my um, maneuver to get as close to it as possible, because there will be a pretty hefty plane change, well, not plane change maneuver, hefty correction maneuver I will have to perform. But, um, you know, we'll figure that out. Anyway, you can kind of see as we pass into the dark, the, this probe is quite nicely lit up. That is because it needs to be lit up in the dark black a void between stars, because... Um, of how the mod works, there'll be no uh, starlight, and I thought it would be nicer if you could see the um, if you could if you could see the probe in the void. Um, and you may be thinking, well, why aren't you using the ambient light mod? Uh, for some reason, that doesn't work with this. Very few mods work with this. You will may you well you may have noticed I was using fairings at the start. That's the procedural fairings mod. I'm using a few mods like MechJab procedural fairings, and I can't think of the other ones, but I think there is maybe one more. Only very little mods. Um, you're probably thinking, why aren't you using Interstellar? Because that'd be easy. If you because Interstellar includes a warp drive, I just point where I want to go and go. That'd be no fun. This is going to be a very curbly series. I'd like to say it's going to be mostly stock. Um, it's gonna be doing it in obviously the dumb way using chemical rockets to go places But it's gonna be a very Kerbally series in that I'm gonna just be I don't know playing a lot more like Kerbal I mean not so many crazy efficient trying to do things just I, I don't know That's not a very good explanation of it. It makes sense to me, but yeah, it's gonna be qu it's gonna be stock It's get well mostly stock um, And it's just gonna be hopefully some fun. I just want to kind of push the boundaries, see what I can do. But anyway, you can see I'm doing a crazy plane change maneuver. The thing with these maneuvers is they're not any more complicated than in interplanetary space. Um, they're just they're just a lot bigger. And you can see I'm doing my uh, correction out. Oh no, before I talk about all of this, let's qu take a quick look at the probe. Um, this is the probe. You can see the transfer stage behind it has done the majority of its work, and inside this unnecessarily heavy box, you can see there are many batteries, there's some RCS fuel, there's some lights which are providing that light, and you may be able to see there's a couple of radio thermal generators. Those are necessary to keep this probe alive when we're in the void between stars. Well, it's not really a void, I guess, but it's, it's void-like. Um, because there, is, there will be no sunlight, because obviously we're orbiting a black hole, that's how this mod works, everything orbits a black hole. Um, which is, I think, one of the theories for how real galaxies work. There's like a supermassive black hole, but I guess accumulated gravity would all would would kind of because there's so many stars in the middle. I guess that would provide kind of like a central gravity thing for outer stars to you know orbit. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on this stuff, as you may know if you've seen any of my videos where I mention anything sciencey. I'm not an astrophysicist. I'm well. I haven't even got my A level in physics yet. So be kind when I get everything wrong. 
Um, anyway, I feel like I was saying, oh yeah, it has re um, radio thermal generators because we need power, because the way this mod models it is obviously uh, thinking, well, there'll still be a sun, just not, you just won't be orbiting it. Yes, but the mod doesn't model that because more processing. It doesn't want to do too much processing because it's already pretty, a pretty hefty mod. Anyway, you will notice that this has been time warping for a while. That, that is because well, I'm going a very long way, I'm leaving the solar system, and, um, well, luckily, as we get out of the orbit of the sun, we do get a faster time warp, because I'm not going to warp nine years, well, like, one day a second. Um, it does go up to an insane amount of time warp, I think it's like 10 million times, so you've got to be a little careful. But anyway, it is time to perform the burn that will take us to the stars. Um, that's a fun thing to say, there'll be lots of puns along that vein. Anyway, um, our nice looking transfer stage with those antenna. A, a lot of the things are um, aesthetic on this. Uh, but anyway, that burns out a little earlier than I was hoping. I wasn't particularly efficient and this burn is massive. So I am using my RCS as well because I'm very scared that I won't make this burn with the probe's fuel. The probe burns out of liquid fuel and oxidizer but it still has enough monopropellant to bring it close to the star. Yeah, I have actually done this a few times before. Um, one time when I may have tried recording this a couple of days ago and then accidentally deleted the footage and then freaked out today. Um, but yeah, I'm recording this on the day of upload because I really wanted to bring this out today because I'm looking forward to it and I hope you are and it will be legendary. Anyway, um, you, you'll see I'm kind of jittering around with time warp. Oh, and that, okay, a lot of things to explain just there. What you saw there was um, the, the star I'm going for was on the other side of the galaxy. Um, that's a cool thing to say, but basically to fix that glitch, um, you just focus on it and it'll bring it to where it's supposed to be. That's just because the mod doesn't continuously move everything. I think it's to reduce processing um, sort of things, so it moves them block by block. And that's why I was jolting the time, the kind of doing the time warp kind of joltily earlier, so I didn't accidentally re-encounter the sun, because you don't want to re-encounter the sun um, be when you're not supposed to, um, because that'll throw you off. Anyway, you can see I've got my periaps down very low, and now we're going to see how much fuel, how much delta V it will require to get an orbit. And surprisingly little, under 300 meters a second, which is quite nice. Um, I thought it would be much, a much bigger burn, but of course this is Kerbal Space Program, so everything is pretty small. And obviously, you, some of you may be thinking already, well, this isn't a particularly realistic representation of a galaxy. Well, first off, there's only three stars. Um, and no, obviously the times are much shorter. Only I, It only took me like nine years to get here which isn't very long, but I think it's awesome. I think this is just a really fun way to play the game. Um, and I want to just, I have so many ideas to do for the, to do for this series, but I don't, I mean, it's going to just be doing missions and I'm not really going to take time into account too much because obviously I've already spent nine years and I've done one mission. So I'm going to, you know, obviously throw realism a bit to the wind, not too much. I'm going to try and make my rockets look nice, but uh, I'm not going to get too uh, caught up in Oh my god, this took so long, the Kerbals will be getting bored or whatever, but I will be, you know, doing things like if I send an interplanetary spaceship, they're not going to be all sitting in a one capsule for nine years. I mean, that's just, that's no fun. Anyway, it's time to perform our injection burn with... Injection burn? That's not the right thing. Um, I guess just our slowdown burn. Our orbital insertion burn. I don't know. No, insertion burns where you burn to get somewhere, I think. I don't know. What is this burn called? Deceleration burn? Circularization, I guess, although I'm not circularizing. My capture burn, that's what it is. Performing my capture burn. I might just edit that out where I can't remember the word capture. Anyway, you can see the blue star down there. I think the textures are a bit glitched, um, but it does have a very, very, very awesome glow. And the uh, thing about, I think there's a planet around this star that actually says, the description is um, life or something like that. And I very much doubt there would be life around this star. Um, Bear with me on this one because I might be able to, might just be about to annoy everyone who watched the last video. Um, because uh, blue stars, characteristically, tend to burn through their fuel very quickly. Um, that's just how it happens. So, they don't tend to last very long, which means um, they probably wouldn't be around long enough to, um, to support life. You might even say they were young stars. I, I did make that slip up in the last episode where I called them young stars. I didn't mean they were like young stars are blue. It's like our sun was never blue. I meant that, um, I meant that they, those will probably be young stars because they don't live very long. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we've got another mission coming back from the star. That's an orbit. That's all cool. But you may be thinking, wow, that was a lot of Delta V you had to use to do that insertion burn. And I'm thinking, yeah, 
What if I could use something very efficient to do that burn? Well, maybe not a burn, maybe an ionization. Um, so that's what this rocket is. It's not going interstellar, it's a little small for that. Oh, well, although I reckon I could probably take something interstellar on a rocket this size. But this is going to low Kerbin orbit, the closest bit of space, to do some tests. Um, I want to see what kind of what kind of thrust what well, what kind of thrust to weight ratio I can get out of an ion engine when it's being powered solely by RTGs. Because it would be quite nice to have a very efficient way of doing maneuvers in um, the void between... Well, I keep calling it the void, I just quite like calling it that. Um, in the kind of gap between stars where there's no solar power. Um, so it would be good if I could use RTGs. Um, you may have actually noticed on the last mission that I just did, um, there were new, no nuclear engines. You're thinking, Peter, you could have probably saved a lot of fuel if you'd used nuclear engines. The thing is, is nuclear engines are kind of my ace in the hole, so I don't want to use them really quickly and think, well, that's the best my technology's ever going to get. But I want to do some cool things with ion, um, so with ion-powered spacecraft. I have actually done an ion lander before, where I landed on Minmus with um, an ion-powered spacecraft, but I reckon, uh, but that was solar-powered, so I'm hoping the RTGs won't Although those big solar panels are really heavy, I think RTGs would probably be lighter. Anyway, as you probably just caught a glimpse of there, this is a fully RTG-powered spacecraft. Um, it doesn't have too much electric charge, because it simply doesn't need it. Um, and it will uh, it'll uh, run by itself. So I'm going to walk around to the morning, so there's lots of sunlight, so you can see everything and be all happy about how the video doesn't look so terrible, and we're going to see what we can do with this. Um, I just want to know if this is enough RTGs to, uh, power the, to power the ion drive. I think actually it's a little too many, because I think it's 16, and I worked out you needed 14. And you probably need much less than 14, because it was a very rough estimation I did in like a couple of seconds. But I reckon it's probably a few less. Um, and so yeah, but this is the first ditch attempt at a fully, ra fully radio thermal powered spacecraft, I guess. Um, ion-powered spacecraft. So yeah, we ignite the engine, or, well, it's not really igniting, it's just forcing ions through it, I guess. Um, although it does, oh yeah, it does accelerate ions out of the grid. I'm just trying to remember how it worked, because I did actually learn that once. But yeah, this seems to work fine. Um, it doesn't obviously accelerate particularly fast, and I'd probably never do a full burn with this, but it might be an efficient way of doing all our tweaking, just save a bit of fuel using an ion drive. I think that could be cool. Although I do have to carry all of these, um, all of these RTGs and uh, the ion drive itself, and probably a bit of xenon gas, um, or xenon, depending on how you say things. It probably is xenon if you're British, um, which I am, but I probably say xenon because I watch too much American TV. But anyway, we've come pretty much to the end of the uh, episode, and this is kind of an invention. I just wanted to see if it had enough solar panels on it. This is kind of what I think I'm going to be sending next episode, back to Dolas, or maybe even Corbo. Um, this is an ion-powered spacecraft for, um, well, for exploring planets. It's, it's, um, it's the ion drives may, made to be used within, near a star, so that it has all the power it needs. Um, so hopefully it'll be able to explore some planets, you know, fly around, uh, just, uh, just get us a bunch of insertions and fly past planets so I can check them out, see what's going on. Um, but yeah, it's hopefully just a long-duration explorer, and hopefully I will be sending it ne next episode. And hopefully you will come back for next episode, because I am unbelievably excited for this series. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll be, it's labelled a mini-series right now, but we'll see. But anyway, I do hope you'll come back for uh, more exploration of the stars. This has been Chaos View with Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs>